This is an alien creature known as the Ursus. It lacks vision and hearing but has an extremely acute sense of smell. It can quickly hunt and kill humans by detecting the scent of their fear. Its appearance dates back to a thousand years ago. Due to the rampant development of human civilization, Earth's environment was severely damaged, and disasters became frequent. Earth was no longer the blue-covered planet it once was. It had become a dead star, unsuitable for human habitation. In order to continue human civilization the nations of the world united to form the Ranger Corps to escort the surviving humans to other planets. After drifting in space for a long time, they found a barely habitable planet, Proxima. However, this planet was the territory where aliens bred monsters. To drive away these intruders, the aliens controlled a type of monster known as Ursus to brutally slaughter the humans. Although the Ursus are blind, they can instantly locate and hunt humans as soon as a person shows even a hint of fear. The more fear one shows, the easier it is to die. Soon, humanity was on the brink of extinction again. Until one day, Cypher, the supreme commander of the Ranger Corps, completely abandoned fear. Fearless in front of the monster, he easily killed the Ursus. Under Cypher's leadership, more people overcame their fear and eventually defeated the aliens. They took over most of the planet, and human civilization survived. Building military bases in the caves, residential skyscrapers were built in the canyons and ravines. Each year, a selection was held, and those who performed excellently would be promoted to the Ranger. Becoming a Ranger and following Cypher on missions was an honor all soldiers pursued. Cypher's son, Kitai, also took his father as a role model. He was determined to join the Ranger Corps to fight against the Ursas and serve the army. Although Katai excelled in all aspects, Commander Velan rejected his enlistment application because Katai couldn't overcome fear in battle and didn't care about team spirit. Always acting alone, his outstanding performance was detached from the team, lacking the qualifications for battle. This was why Katai couldn't advance to the Ranger, dejected. Katai returned home. When Cypher asked about the exam, Katai sadly said he didn't pass. This led to a severe reprimand from Cypher. Cypher believed that it's okay to perform poorly in exams, but his attitude must be correct. Cypher's militaristic discipline pushed Kitai's mood to rock bottom. Understanding all this, his wife persuaded her husband that although their son was emotional, he was still their child. And you don't understand him at all. For him, what he needed was not a commander but a father. When Kitai was young, and Ursus suddenly broke into their home, his sister, Senshi, chose to confront the monster alone to protect him. However, Kitai witnessed Senshi being killed by the creature, which became Kitai's nightmare, preventing him from overcoming fear. He blamed his father for Senshi's death, leading to a deep rift between them. Therefore, the wife advised her husband to spend more time with their son. Feeling guilty, Cypher decides to foster a father-son bond and offers to take his son to the training base for experience. The next day, a prepared Katai followed his father to the airport. They put the captured Ursus in a cage and put it in the spaceship. This Ursus was to be transported to a training base for new soldiers to practice their skills. Soon, the spaceship set off into outer space, heading towards another planet's training base. During the flight, Katai, too excited to sleep, wandered around the spaceship and ended up at the tail section. There was a huge cage at the tail, containing an Ursus. The guard told him that it was used to train new soldiers to overcome their fear of the monster, making them undetectable to it. Encouraged by the soldier, Katai slowly approached the cage. But as soon as he crossed the warning line, the Ursus detected him. Katai was startled by a terrifying roar. He still couldn't overcome his fear. At this moment, Cypher, who had woken up from his seat, sensed something unusual about the ship. He rushed to the tail, found his son, and ordered him to return to his seat, fasten his safety belt, and commanded everyone to secure all cargo and enter combat readiness. Then, Cypher hurried to the cockpit to check the situation. As expected, there was a problem. Their spaceship had encountered a meteorite swarm drifting in space, with countless meteorites hurtling towards them. The spaceship violently shook and soon suffered damage. In a critical moment, Cypher decisively ordered the pilot to forcefully pass through an unknown wormhole to avoid the meteorites. The next second, the spaceship jumped to a strange star field. But the crisis was not over. The spaceship, severely damaged and leaking energy, could no longer continue its journey and had to make an emergency landing on the nearest planet. The pilot scanned the surrounding planets but couldn't find a suitable place to land. Just when they were in despair, a blue planet appeared in front of them, perhaps it was fate. The nearest planet was Earth, the human home they had left a thousand years ago. However, 
the AI warned them that this planet was not suitable for human habitation, as Earth was already irradiated everywhere. The interstellar authorities had listed Earth as a forbidden zone and prohibited human landing, but in this emergency, the remaining energy of the spaceship was insufficient for another wormhole crossing, they had no choice but to take a desperate chance and land on Earth. Kitai, encountering such a situation for the first time, was so scared that he was breathing rapidly, just as Cypher was comforting him. The spaceship, losing power during the landing, suddenly disintegrated in the air. Cypher, not wearing a seatbelt, was thrown to the other side of the spaceship, and some crew members were sucked out. Kitai, firmly secured in his seat, quickly lost consciousness. The spaceship crashed heavily onto the ground. After an unknown period, Kitai woke up from unconsciousness to find the spaceship in ruins. All the crew members dead, their bodies scattered everywhere. Kitai frantically searched for his father, although his father was still alive. His legs were broken and he was completely immobile. Worse still, the only emergency signal transmitter was destroyed in the accident. Cypher instructed his son to move it to the control room. Fortunately, the cockpit of the spaceship was still operational. Cypher told his son that there was another signal transmitter in the spaceship's tail section. However, since the spaceship disintegrated in mid-air, the tail section, according to the scan, was about 100 kilometers away from them. They could only be rescued by quickly retrieving the signal transmitter and sending a signal into deep space. Since Cypher couldn't walk, his son was the only one who could undertake this important mission alone. Before departing, Cypher gave his son six vials of breathing fluid, reminding him that Earth's atmosphere had changed, and he must use one vial every 24 hours to survive outside. This meant that Katai had to find the tail section within six days. Also, Katai's backpack was equipped with a virtual imaging device, allowing Cypher to guide him throughout the journey via video sharing from the cockpit. Then, Cypher handed his weapon to his son for self-defense and sternly told him that this planet was actually Earth. After thousands of years of evolution, Earth's creatures were dangerous enough to kill a human, so he must not take them lightly. Moreover, he must be constantly vigilant of the Ursas that had landed with the spaceship. The Ursas was also imprisoned in the tail section, and now they could only hope that the Ursas had been killed during the fall. Still, the thought of setting out alone filled Katai with fear, but his father's comforting words calmed him down. After checking his equipment, Katai set off with a heavy heart. Since the spaceship had crashed into a canyon, Katai first had to climb a steep cliff barehanded. During the climb, a small spider startled him, almost causing him to fall. Initially struggling to cope, Katai finally reached the top and saw what Earth looked like after 1,000 years. Vegetation was everywhere, birds soared in the sky, and herds of cattle roamed the lush grasslands. The planet was teeming with life, dominated by animals. There was no time to enjoy it. But in order to find his son's way, Cypher activated the remote detection program and released all the trackers. The main purpose was to search for Ursus. Then, Cypher told his son through the communication device on his arm that Earth's temperature would drop to tens of degrees below zero at night. Katai had to reach the marked geothermal spot before dark to ensure he wouldn't freeze to death at night. Meanwhile, Cypher scanned his thigh, preparing to perform an arterial shunt surgery on himself. At that moment, Katai entered a dense jungle. Suddenly, he noticed his protective suit turning black, indicating nearby danger. Katai looked panicked and quickly asked his father what was happening. Cypher's skin revealed an unknown creature rapidly approaching Katai. Soon, a baboon appeared in front of Katai. Cypher told him to stay calm and not act rashly. Katai, who had never seen a baboon, panicked and didn't heed his father's warning, throwing a stone at it. However, this act had serious consequences as baboons are social animals. The provoked baboon immediately called its companions. A group of baboons retaliated by throwing stones, forcing Katai to flee. The baboons chased after him. In a critical moment, Katai followed his father's instructions and jumped into a river, causing the baboons to finally give up. Having narrowly escaped, Katai, still in shock, did not dare to stay and quickly ran deeper into the jungle. After running a long distance, he stopped to rest, feeling weak and sore all over, indicating something was wrong with his body. Suddenly, Katai's protective suit turned white. He looked at his palm and saw a mutated leech attached to the back of his hand, which he quickly flung to the ground, but the neurotoxin released by the mutated leech had already rapidly spread in his body, causing him to feel dizzy and collapse to the ground. 
his face began to swell and turn black as the toxin invaded his nervous system, and he temporarily lost his sight. In agony and at a loss, Katai pleaded with his father to save him. Cypher could only instruct him to stay calm and remotely guide him to inject the antidote serum in sequence. Katai had to rely on his sense of touch to find the antidote in his bag and successfully inject it into his heart. Now the second. ASAP. When Katai was about to inject the second dose, his arm became numb, his face swelled like a pig's head, and he struggled to exert any strength. Finally, under Cypher's direction, he aimed the needle at his chest and fell forward to the ground, successfully injecting the serum into his body. However, the medicine didn't work immediately, and Katai fell into a deep sleep. Katai slept for several hours, and it was almost dark, the surrounding plants switched to self-protection mode, and the temperature dropped 5 degrees every 10 minutes. Watching his son still in a deep sleep, Cypher appeared calm on the surface but was actually very panicked inside. He kept calling his son's name, and fortunately, Katai finally woke up, relieving Cypher. Cypher reminded his son that night's temperature would be extremely harsh, with the whole earth entering a frozen state. Even with the protection of the protective suit, humans couldn't last long. Before dark, Katai had to reach the nearest geothermal spot, or he would be frozen to death. Seeing his son temporarily out of danger, Cypher took the opportunity to continue the shunt surgery on his leg to promote blood circulation. In a daze, Cypher saw his daughter. Cypher had a son and a daughter, but he doted on his daughter more. Even when facing a call from Senshi before a battle, Cypher showed great affection. However, during an Ursa's invasion, his daughter was brutally killed by the Ursa's while protecting her brother, leaving a deep scar in both Cypher and Katai's hearts. Katai successfully reached the geothermal area. Cypher asked him to check the remaining equipment and take another vial of breathing fluid. However, Katai discovered that he had accidentally damaged two vials of breathing fluid while escaping, meaning he only had three days left, which might not be enough to complete his mission. He decided not to tell his father and took a gamble. However, watching the screen showing his son's heartbeat rate, Cypher instantly knew the truth but chose not to expose his son's lie. Soon night fell, and a heavy rain poured from the sky. Katai asked his father about the first time he overcame fear and defeated an Ursus. Cypher shared those vivid memories with Katai, explaining that fear is an illusion, it only exists in our imagination of the future. Fear is a product of the imagination, stemming from our worry about the future, the unknown, the uncertain, and even things that don't exist. But danger is real, whereas fear is a choice in the face of danger, thus, Katai could also choose to conquer his fear and gain the skill of becoming undetectable to the monsters. Afterward, Katai spent the rainy night alone in sleep. At dawn, Katai set off again, but soon came across a dismembered limb of a hot baboon at the roadside. After scanning, Cypher found it was a trace left by the Ursus, indicating that the Ursus was uninjured and had escaped. Sensing the threat, Katai quickened his pace. For safety, Katai temporarily changed his route, heading towards the sound of water only to find himself in front of a cliff waterfall. Katai was amazed to see that earth, without a human foothold, had still developed quite well, beautiful mountains, rivers, and many fierce beasts. With no way forward, Cypher instructed Katai to again inventory his supplies. Upon discovering that his son only had two vials of breathing fluid left, Cypher recalculated the best route. There were two options, a safer route that would take at least three days but without enough breathing fluid, or a dangerous route gliding through the air from the cliff, reaching the tail section in just two days, but with many unknown risks. After much deliberation, Cypher immediately ordered the mission to be aborted and returned to the ship. Upon hearing the mission was to be abandoned, Katai recalled memories from his childhood. Back then, Senshi had ordered him similarly, but Katai could only watch his sister being brutally killed by the Ursus. Katai became emotionally charged, realizing that if he abandoned the mission now, his father would have no chance of survival. Senshi's death had always haunted him, but this time he couldn't make the same mistake. He wanted to prove to his father that he was not a coward and could complete this mission. So, ignoring his father's advice, Katai turned and jumped off the sheer cliff without hesitation. His protective suit unfolded gliding wings, and he thrillingly maneuvered between the cliffs. Everything seemed smooth, but before Katai could celebrate, Cypher detected an unknown creature rapidly approaching Katai. It turned out to be a gigantic eagle, casting a shadow as large as the sky, targeting Katai as prey and swooping towards him. No matter how Katai dodged, the eagle relentlessly pursued him. In desperation, Katai retracted the gliding wings and plunged downward, 
As the eagle pounced from behind, Katai suddenly changed direction, intending to pass through the waterfall and use the water to block the eagle's pursuit. Just when he thought he was safe, the eagle circled around the water and flew straight at him, knocking him unconscious. Communication with his father was cut off. Until Katai wakes up again he finds himself captured in a giant eagle's nest next to some newly hatched baby eagles. It seems the giant eagle considered Katai as reserve food. As he was planning his escape, he saw a pack of wolf-like beasts climbing up the tree trunk. Katai quickly retreated. Soon, one of the beasts reached the nest, evidently targeting the chicks. Fortunately, the giant eagle arrived in time to fend off the threat. However, while the eagle could only hold off one beast, another snuck into the nest. Katai grabbed his weapon to defend, but the beast was uninterested in him and went straight for the eagle chicks. Unable to bear the sight, Katai fought to protect the innocent chicks, quickly repelling the beast. As more beasts invaded, Katai stood his ground with his weapon raised, determined to protect the chicks. Hearing the commotion, the giant eagle joined Katai, pulling out a beast and throwing it away. As the last beast was about to attack, Katai, noticing a loose spot under his feet, had an idea. In the moment the beast lunged, Katai leaped and slashed it, sending it tumbling out of the nest. His protective actions made the giant eagle lower its guard and rush to save the other chicks. But after the tumult, all the chicks in the nest had perished. When Katai climbed down from the tree, he found the other chicks had also not survived the disaster. The giant eagle mourned beside their bodies in despair. Seeing the wailing eagle, Katai remembered to contact his father but found his communicator broken. Without his father's guidance, Katai had to continue alone. With the giant eagle circling overhead, Katai quickly passed through the jungle and arrived at the waterfall. As night fell, wild pigs began to return to their nests. To escape the cold, Katai hurriedly hid in a dark cave. In the 1000 years since humanity's disappearance, Earth had returned to a prehistoric civilization, and every creature was potentially deadly. Luckily, the creature inside the cave didn't attack Katai. Then, using calculations, Katai determined his approximate location and direction and survived the night using the heat from the cave's magma. Early in the morning, Katai climbed out of the cave and continued his journey, noticing the soaring eagle still following him in the sky. To reach his destination quickly, Katai took his last breathing fluid, leaving him with only 24 hours. He then constructed a simple raft by the river, because traveling by water not only saved time but also reduced physical exertion by going downstream. However, as the raft drifted, Katai felt so exhausted that he fell into a deep sleep. Fortunately, in his sleep, Katai was startled awake by his sister. As the temperature around him began to drop rapidly, the river quickly froze over, prompting Katai to climb ashore. Due to the delay, Katai estimated it would be difficult to reach the geothermal spot before dark. The surrounding cold wave was approaching, with plants visibly freezing rapidly. His protective suit was slowly turning white, which meant that his body could no longer withstand the cold. Without finding a geothermal spot soon, he would freeze to death in these wilds. However, the temperature dropped to minus 50 degrees much faster than he had expected. In such frigid conditions, a shivering Katai eventually collapsed. Just as he was about to freeze to death, something dragged him away, placing him in a pit and covering him with branches. When he awoke again, the temperature had risen, and he hadn't sustained serious injuries. Katai quickly brushed aside the branches and climbed out of the pit, only then realizing that he hadn't frozen to death because the giant eagle had saved him. The eagle had used its body heat to help Katai survive the cold night but had frozen to death itself. Moved by the eagle's sacrifice, Katai realized it had been following him to find a chance to repay his kindness. As expected, everything has its own spirit. Katai, unable to afford the luxury of grief, had no choice but to continue on his journey. Unfortunately, the respiratory fluid had run out and Katai couldn't get enough oxygen, and it became more and more difficult to breathe. Luckily, he spotted a piece of the ship's tail wreckage in the bushes, indicating he was close to his destination. His survival instincts reignited. Katai climbed a tree for a better view and spotted the tail section nearby. After determining the location, Katai recklessly rushed towards the wreckage and finally found the lost tail section of the ship. Fortunately, after finding the breathing fluid intact in the wreckage, Katai took one and was thus able to relieve the pain of near suffocation. Regaining his strength, Katai found a weapon and cautiously approached the cage where the Ursus was imprisoned. As expected, the cage was broken, and the Ursus was nowhere to be seen, meaning it could appear at any moment. In the urgent situation, 
Katai quickly found the most important signal transmitter in the tail section, then, retrieving a communicator from a deceased crew member, he re-established contact with his father and reported the situation, he activated the signal transmitter to send a distress signal into space, but after several attempts to connect to the transmitter, the signal failed, and Katai had an emotional breakdown, after venting his frustration, Katai meditated on one knee, as his father had taught him, to calm down, he quickly deduced that volcanic smoke from a nearby eruption was causing ionospheric interference above him, disrupting the signal. Cypher told him that he needed to reach the nearby volcano's summit to send the signal. On his way, Katai saw a crew member impaled on a tree fork, which terrified him. Cypher reassured Katai that it was a ploy by the Ursas to incite human fear and urged him to bravely continue. However, unbeknownst to Katai, his fear had already attracted the Ursas. Katai rushed toward the nearby volcano summit not daring to stop for a moment. Meanwhile, Ursus had locked onto Katai's position and was rapidly closing in. Cypher detected this but was unable to help his son, silently praying for Katai to make his own decisions. But as Katai climbed halfway up the slope, his protective suit suddenly turned black, signaling Ursus' arrival. In panic, Katai quickly hid in a volcanic cave, cautiously seeking an escape route, unaware that Ursus was already lying in ambush. Ursus suddenly descended from above, Attacking Katai. Facing the powerful Ursus, Katai could only pick up a weapon and desperately flee. But because Ursus can sense Katai's fear, no matter where he hides, Ursus will find him and open his mouth to launch a long range attack on Katai. Even though Katai is hiding in a rocky crevice, he gets hit by Ursa's saliva and falls into a cave. Luckily, there is an underground river, so Katai didn't fall to his death, and Cypher had a chance to heal his leg, but it would have put him in a coma for a while. But Cypher gave it up just to be there for his son and to give him the psychological support he needed to face all kinds of dangers and to help his son get over the hurdles that he remembered. But now Cypher's injuries are getting more and more serious and his body is getting weaker and weaker, they don't have much time left. Katai carefully surveyed his surroundings and noticed a light in the distance, so he swam towards it and found a way out. He hurried to the exit without delay. As he was about to climb out, Ursus suddenly emerged from the water and grabbed his ankle. Katai quickly activated his weapon, wedged it into the rock wall, and kicked Ursus down. The next second, Ursus attacked again. Luckily, the narrow cave entrance restricted its movement. Katai, with his smaller size, quickly crawled out of the cave and reached the summit. He didn't waste time on the struggling Ursas at the cave entrance and took out the signal transmitter to send a distress signal. But just as the transmitter connected successfully, Ursas caught up and grabbed Katai, slamming him hard against the stone wall. The next second, Katai was thrown out, losing his ability to resist. The Ursas, stuck in the cave entrance, was on the verge of breaking free, with immense pain coursing through his body. Katai recalled his most painful memories since she being brutally killed by Ursus while protecting him. Would he meet the same fate? Then, his father's teachings echoed in his ears. Fear is an illusion. Danger is real. But fear is just a choice. Feel the present moment with your heart. Finally, Katai's gaze became firm, and his attention freed from fear. The falling volcanic ash seemed to slow down in his eyes. Even as Ursus stepped over him, it failed to sense Katai's presence. In that moment, Katai had let go of his fear and disappeared from Ursa's sight. Katai slowly stood up, no longer able to smell fear to locate Katai. The Ursas started to become agitated. Katai then picked up his weapon and cleanly severed one of the Ursa's legs. This seemingly mighty creature could only let up furious roars in frustration. After several rounds of attacks, the Ursas was heavily wounded. Then, Katai leapt onto the Ursa's back stabbing his double-edged blade into its body and relentlessly piercing the creature's neck by continuously transforming the weapon. The Ursas, like a lamb to the slaughter, screamed in pain, no matter how desperately it struggled. Katai held on tight, realizing defeat was inevitable. The Ursas tried to leap off the cliff, aiming for a mutual demise. However, Katai didn't give Ursas a chance and changed his weapon form again to give him a fatal blow. After vanquishing the Ursas, there was neither the fear of a close brush with death nor the thrill of vengeance achieved on Katai's face. All his emotions had settled into tranquility. Katai had transcended himself and become a true warrior. Now, with his father's life hanging by a thread, 
Katai picked up the signal transmitter and launched an electromagnetic beam into the sky, toward outer space. The distress signal quickly spread throughout the universe to the Nova Prime. Soon, rescuers arrived, cut open the wreckage of the spaceship, and found Cypher, barely alive. They brought him onto the ship. Thanks to timely medical attention, Cypher's life was saved. But upon seeing his son, Cypher, enduring his pain, stood up and saluted him. Katai received his father's recognition and became a true ranger. The father was proud of his son, and the son revered his father. The relationship between father and son, who were never good at expressing their emotions, became deeper and more trusting after the accident. With no trace of technology and industry, Earth itself developed quite well reverting to a prehistoric civilization and becoming a paradise for flora and fauna.